Amazon's Will of Time season 1 has come to a dramatic end, with the Dark One apparently defeated. But is that really what's happened? This video contains spoilers for the Wheel of Time season 1. So if you haven't already watched it, you can leave the video right now and come back later. The Wheel of Time season 1 finale, The Eye of the World, ended with a first look at a brand new threat for Rand, Moraine, and the rest of their friends. After the forces of good barely survived the Dark One's might at both the Eye of the World and Faldara, we cut to the far western shore. We watch a little girl digging for clams notice something strange on the horizon. A fleet of mysterious ships with red sails appears, and soon the one power seems to be harnessed as a weapon, intended to kill the child and anyone else in its path. Whether you've read all 14 books in Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, or you're a newbie to this fantasy world, we expect you've got questions after that season 1 finale. Kicking off in 1990, the high fantasy book series introduced a rich world of complex characters, magic, danger around every corner, and a cyclical battle between light and darkness. Author Robert Jordan loosed this epic story from his mind into our world, though he didn't get to finish it himself. Jordan passed as he worked on the final installment of the series, and using Jordan's exhaustive notes and working with his widow, Harriet McDougall, Brandon Sanderson picked up the torch and completed that installment with three novels. The final tome arrived in 2013. The Wheel of Time Episode 8, titled Eye of the World, opens with a flashback 3,000 years ago. We see an argument of sorts happening, in the old tongue, between two individuals. There is a state of disagreement between Latra Posse de Cum, the Tamerlan Seat, and Luz Theron Telamon, the Dragon Reborn. Luz puts forth his reasoning. He says that they have a genuine chance of doing something that has never been done before, i.e. caging the Dark One. But Latra seemed to be an austere woman who had made her decision, and no matter how much Luz persuaded her, she was obdurate on her resolution. What do Ran and Moraine witness in the Blight? In The Wheel of Time Episode 8, Rand and Moraine make their way through the gloomy and murky stretch of area known as the Blight. Rand starts getting visions as he inches closer towards the Dark One. It was the Dark One. He knows where we are. He receives a vivid dream where he sees a man he believes to be a personification of the Dark One. It is a dream or reality he does not understand. All he knows is that it would have implications on his real life for sure. The man, played by Faris Faris, tries to create doubt in Rand's mind. He mocks his master plan and tells him that no matter what he and Moraine do, it would not be enough to curb the rapidly growing powers of the Dark One. Moraine gives Rand a special stone called the Sa Angriel. She tells him that when the time would come, Rand would be able to channel consciously and would be able to proliferate the power manifold with the help of the Sa Angriel. Without doubt, dilemma, and a feeling of consternation about what the future held for them, Moraine and Rand forge ahead. Before we move on, here's a quick challenge for you. If you can leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications in less than 5 seconds, you will have 10 years of amazing luck. Hurry up and try it. It actually works. What happened at Tarwin's Gap? The army of Trollocs was moving towards the Tarwin's Gap with full tilt. Lord Ajamar Jagad prepares his men for what he, together with others too, considered to be the last battle. Tarwin's Gap was a structure created to give a strategic advantage to the army of Faldara. The enemy could be spotted from a distance and could be stopped from entering the city. But this time, the Trollocs were in huge numbers. Lady Amalisa did not approve of her brother's plan to action. She knew that it was a death wish. Lord Angelmar wasn't living in his imaginary world. He knew very well that his army would not be able to hold the gap for long. He knew that the city would soon fall after that. But his motive was not to win, but just to buy some time. He was ready to sacrifice his life so that the world could get a fair chance to prepare itself for the impending battle. Who took the Horn of Valerie? Hurin gets agitated and tells Loyal that he cannot just sit and wait for the battle to get over. He was done following the way of the leaf. Loyal knew exactly where they could be of help. They met Lord Yakoda, who was digging something with his men. The tension builds as on one end, Ninaeve, Egwene, and Lady Amalisa, with other women who could channel, were trying to stop the army that had already penetrated through the gap. 
Lord Yakoda and his fellow soldiers were actually digging for the Horn of Valerie. The horn was to be blown before the last battle, as it was believed that Pattern's greatest heroes would aid in the cause. Hadan Fane, a peddler whom Purin knew from the two rivers, revealed that he was tracking the five potential dragon reborn from the inception. He kills Lo'el, Lord Yakoda, and other soldiers. He revealed that even though only one would ultimately become the dragon reborn, all five played a significant role in the battle. Leaving Perrin to ponder over the doom that awaited them all, Padan Fane left the scene taking the Horn of Valerie with him. Did Ran defeat the Dark One? Ran reaches a dark and dingy place, which he felt that he had seen before. Moraine tells him that she doesn't have any knowledge about it since every record of the place was destroyed by the Dark Friends. Once again, the Dark One takes Ran to a utopian land. Though Ran's body lay unconscious with Moraine, mentally, he was transported to this vivid dream where he met the man once again. Ran saw Iguin and his child. Everything seemed just about perfect, and Ran incessantly gets allured toward making this dream into reality. Though Ran gets tempted for a moment, he reminds himself of his virtues and morals. He knew that Iguin would have asked him to do a similar thing. He uses the Sa Angriao to end this dream. The dream ends, but Ran knows that this is not the end. He knew that the Dark One was still not defeated. What they were thinking of as the last battle was just the beginning, as said by Padan Fane. Ran understands the situation in profundity. It feels like his questions have been answered. He knows there is no going back. Moraine tells Lan, who reaches the scene just as Rand leaves, that she could not touch the source. In a melodramatic sequence, Iguin was able to bring Nena Eve back to life, who had gotten burned to death while channeling. How Nena Eve could help Moraine in Season 2 Wheel of Time's Season 1 finale deviates dramatically from the books, incorporating some ideas from later novels. One of these is the idea that Moraine loses access to the One Power. In the Amazon Prime series, she is stripped of her ability to wield it by the Dark One himself. This will certainly serve as a fascinating setup for Wheel of Time Season 2, which will presumably explore Lan's struggle to deal with the breaking of his warder's bond. It's possible he would choose to bond with Nina Eve, given the two are clearly falling in love and do indeed wind up bound together in Jordan's books. Nina Eve and Iguin are both remarkably powerful, and they may well be able to accomplish the impossible in helping Moraine regain access to the One Power. There seem to be almost no limits to the power those two women wield, with Iguin literally bringing Nina Eve back from the dead. Alternatively, Amazon's Wheel of Time could make that part of the overarching narrative in Season 2, with Moraine resorting to the same methods she used in the books, wearing a powerful bracelet on Griel, making her even stronger than before. Who are the Shan Chan villains? Wheel of Time Season 1 ends with a new threat arriving on the western shore of the continent, the Shan Chans. In the books, the Shan Chan Empire was established a thousand years after the Trolloc Wars, and it has already endured for generations. The Shan Chans have successfully wiped out all the shadow spawn on their continent, but they have come to view the One Power as a tool that should be used. They use Kundular necklaces to control channelers, turning them into puppets under their control. In the ending scene of the Wheel of Time Episode 8, we see a little girl standing on the western shore and a fleet of ships approaching her. Some of the women on the ships had muzzles and mouthpieces covering their mouths. Together they channel through the water and raise a gigantic wave no less than a tsunami. In the books, the Shan Chans actually managed to capture some of the most powerful Aes Sedai, bending them to their will, and they even managed to leash Egwene herself. It remains to be seen whether Amazon's Wheel of Time series will follow the same approach, or whether the plot will be twisted around somewhat. The first season of the Wheel of Time ends, leaving much to explore for the upcoming seasons. What will be the role of Nina Eve, Egwene, Perrin, and Moraine? Will Mats become an ally of the Dark One? Will Rand be able to do what he had set out for? These are the impending questions that will probably be answered in the subsequent seasons.